Hello, guys. So um, if you're watching, you can see the most beautiful um, Aliza Ben Shalom with me today. Yay! Hi. Hello. Hey, hi, hi. Um, I'm thrilled to have you. I'm girl crushing very hard. So I'm going to try and take a deep breath and bring it down a notch. This is like your star. Your superstar. <laughs> yes, you are. Yep, the show was amazing. Okay, so if you didn't watch Jewish Matchmaking, you have to go watch it. It's still on Netflix. It's on Netflix. You can check it out. Jewish and It's so good. It's so good. And I have to tell you, I got your book. Um, I missed you when you were in Charlotte, but I, your publicist sent me your book. I finished it. I loved it. It was amazing. I feel like it, I feel like kind of I could hear you, but I could also relate completely and hear myself because yeah. I'm like I say that. Oh, I say that. Oh, I, so I I think you align perfectly with my people, and um, I think everyone needs to read this book. Matchmaker, matchmaker. I want to sing. Matchmaker, matchmaker. Give... There it is. It's so finding pretty. Finding a love that lasts. It's not just finding a love. No. It's not just finding a date. Find me a love that lasts. Yes. You're Besheret. Can we say that? Yeah, you're know? soulmate. Yeah. You're soulmate. I love it. Okay. So you have some things in this book that I was reading last night and I'm like, oh my God, I got to do this. Got to talk about this. I love this. And it's so funny. I think that you have this rapport where you're a tough cookie, kind of. Like I'm, a you don't, sweet, I'm a sweet you're tough. sweet you're like one of those like you're like a, a mushy you know gooey chocolate chip cookie you know like a little oh yeah I don't know but I just can't take it so yeah people listen to you I feel like sometimes I want to say things to my clients and I like don't but now I'm going to because you do I'm gonna be like no Lisa said it no but you have to like again you have to like sugarcoat it because yes. nobody wants to be told to their face something that is hard to hear I mean it's not true some I do have people that say Lisa can you just you just Give it to me. want and just say it. And I'm like, it's not really my style. You should pick a different coach. Like I'm going to get my message across, but right. you're not even going to know. They're, they're going to be like, how does that work? I'm like, exactly. Exactly. Like you don't even know. And it doesn't, it doesn't have to hit hard. If you want okay. somebody to hit hard. I mean, I, I, I am like that. Either. Tough cookie. I say it straight also. So it's not true. Well, you're just, I just love that. You're like, just, you just say it. And it's, and people are like, Oh, you know, like on the show, they're like, Oh, Lisa said it's always gold. You know, we got it. We got it. Okay. So first of all, will you start by telling everybody how this started? You're in Israel, by the way, everybody. Um, tell us a little bit about your background. Okay. And then I'm so going to be asking the tough in, questions. Yeah, the tough questions. I was born and raised in Philly and lived there my entire life until three and a half years ago. I didn't know that. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Three and a half years ago during COVID or, uh, yeah, during COVID, mm -hmm. I said to my husband, we've always talked about Aliyah and we never found the right time, but like the moment is now. And he's like, could you define now? Like how now is now? And I was like, well, whatever Nefesh Benefesh says, however long it takes to move to Israel, they give us a timeline because there's paperwork that has to be processed. Right. He's like, give me an idea. I was like six months. And he was like, you know, like six months. And I was like, yeah. Like wrap it up, sell the house, sell the car, no, <laughs> sell really? the business. Keep You're like, everything we're going in. Oh my God. And like, you just decided this was it for you. You just wanted to make we, Aliyah. We always talked about it. We, I told him like, if you want to get married, I want to make Aliyah, which means that I want to move to yes. Israel. And if you don't want to do that, then you're not my person. And that's okay. But like, this is, you know, like you said, I'm a tough cookie. So this, I know what my values are. I know what I want in my life. And it took me much longer. It took us much longer to get here than I ever expected. We moved after we had been married for 18 years. So you had and, so much stuff, right? I mean, like. And our kids are big. Like we yeah. moved here, they were seven to 17. Now they're 11 to 20. I can't and believe how fast stuff, stuff goes though. Yeah. It's amazing. I, I can't but believe it. But it's been such a blessing. I, I drive around every day and I'm like, I live here. I live here. I mean, I, it's like not a trip. No, it's not a trip. <laughs> all the time. I live here. I live here. I love you it. You know what? It's so, so funny happy. you say that because my parents, when they, when I went to Israel, I went on the singles mission, you know, yeah. the singles mission yeah. from Detroit. And um, my parents wait, were wait, like, no, no, no. I don't know the singles mission. There's a singles mission. Yes. It's like the, the um, Federation, Jewish Federation, or, you know, does like a single. So they take all the singles between 22 and four, like 40 and they put them on a plane and they send them to Israel. And then from all over the country, people come. So it's like, there's a big, huge singles mission. And I actually fell in love with the guy who was running the show. And I'm like, what a nerd, but okay, he's going to be great, perfect sperm. And I was like, I'm not, I'm not late. He was from Detroit also, but I'm like, we could just stay here. Can't we just stay here? Like, I never wanted to leave. My parents were worried. They were like, yeah. are you coming home? I'm like, hmm. I am home. That's what people like, oh when are you God. coming home? I'm like, I am. I'm so jealous. 
I'm so jealous. I'm You're so allowed jealous. to be. This is like the one thing in life that it's good to be jealous of. Yes. Because maybe one day you'll do it. Oh my God. Can you imagine? It's my boys best. haven't even been. I get. To, I have to, gotta get my you boys there. To, so I've been telling my kids for years, one day when we move to Israel, they're like, yeah, 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 yeah. We've heard this story for the last decade. Yeah, yeah. And then COVID hit. And I was like, so I told my big kids, by the way, you're going to go to a boarding school in Israel. You're leaving in four months. We're going to follow you. We'll be there another four months, five months after you. And I know you've never been there, but we're moving there for the rest of our lives. So say goodbye to your friends, pack up your life and you're moving. And they were like, a what? And I was were like, they yeah, freaked yeah, yeah. out or were they okay? They were okay. Thank God. Besides being a dating relationship, marriage expert yeah. and matchmaker and, and coach, I am also, which is a part of this, a transition expert. What? Literally, when you have to transition from one thing to another, yes. from one school to another, from one camp to another, from one community to another, from one country to another, I am a transition expert expert. So we had conversations, you know, what are the good things that you're looking forward to? What are all the things that you're concerned about? What's the worst thing that you could possibly imagine happening? Now multiply it times. A I'm like, oh you God. know, yeah. and, and what are you going to do if you get into a situation that you're, you're struggling with, that's going to be a difficult situation. How are you going to handle it? So we think through and talk through and Love mentally that. walk through all of those things. And then when you're in this situation, it's not the first time it happened to you. It's now the second because you've already experienced it. And now you just get to play it out. Oh. And so it, it helps them process and think through it. And then it doesn't become scary anymore. It just becomes like, Oh, okay. You know, it's, it still yeah. might not be, you know, comfortable. It might be different, but it's not, it's not, it's not the it's first not like time you thought about it. Like by surprise, not like yeah. oh, never thought of that. It's like, nope, my mother thought of that. I thought of that. We, we already talked about that. I know what to do. I got this. It's That's awesome. Fine. One of my kids like, Ima, it's fine. I it's got fine. this. And I'm like, <laughs> you're like Boy. done. That's perfect. Um, okay. So how did you get into the dating matchmaking? Because you're like, if you don't watch the show, you guys go watch the show. But I mean, you're amazing at matchmaking. Like you got it. You know, like I don't do that. I'm a coach, but like you're just like a, this. I don't know. You're really good. How did you get into it? Like you just thought I'm going to do a shit. Ah, this is it. I'm going to make some. Or what did you think? So when I was younger, I just, I, first of all, I always looked at families, right? I'm looking at couples and watching people. I was one of those people watchers. And I remember being in camp, and the first match I ever tried to make was with my brother, who was two years younger, and my girlfriend in my bunk. And I'm like, you'll go to the camp dance together. It'll be great. Her name is Michelle. She's so cute. <laughs> right? That's yes. the first match I tried to make. It didn't last long term, but I oh. think they had a dance, right? And then in college, one of my girlfriends, I was working at a restaurant and I met this guy and, and we showed up at a, I think we hung out at like a local restaurant bar and we went to say hi. And the guy who works there is there and he's there and he comes over the table. How are you guys doing? Good, good. And I saw there was like a little sparkle and a twinkle oh. in their eye. Right. And I'm going, oh, this is good. Okay. I'll be right back. And I left them alone to talk. I so ran smart. to the bathroom. I'm like hiding out in the bathroom. I'm like, Mom, talk to me. I'm bored. I'm just hanging out in the bathroom because I'm trying to make him. <laughs> you're such a good friend. Friends. You're such a, that's such a good wing woman. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're so awesome. I like, totally stepped aside. And then I got married and we had two young kids and it was like baby, baby central, which I love children, adore. All I wanted to do was get married and have children. That was my biggest dream and goal in life. Same. And yeah. And, and I was home and I was like, I got to do something. Cause I need like a little adult interaction here. I need some stimulation. And my girlfriend's like, I'm like a volunteer matchmaker online, you know, blah, blah, blah. You could try this too. And I was like, I am in. And then Done. listen to this. You'll really like this. When I called to say like, I want to do this. You, they don't just take anybody. And they not. said, well, you, you, are you willing to work with older singles now? I know nothing at this point about matchmaking, nothing, okay. zero, right? I'm like, yeah, sure, get over with somebody. So I start working with 40s, 50s, but and everybody, the... I was young. I was in my, I was 27, 20, oh something like That's that, awesome. 20, okay. something in that age range, okay. 28, I don't know. And, um, and I started working with 
older singles because that was the only way for me to get into the website because if oh. not they like oh we don't have any openings and I was like no no no, I don't care it doesn't matter but I learned there's different challenges that different age groups have and yes when you're in your 20s quote young and dumb right you can you don't you didn't build your whole life already so you can build it with somebody it is a little bit easier to come together and older singles have a different story either they weren't married and they have a whole life that they're they're bringing together or they were married and they do or don't have children and they do or don't have history of trauma and stories and stuff and family and extended family we call and then that baggage have, we call that baggage yeah tons of baggage right you know tons. some people's some people's are overweight you gotta pay yes. extra to slap it with you right but some people come with a lot of baggage and to me i was like okay wait like it was like a puzzle for me to solve so okay, we have to talk about prenups. We have to talk about like making sure that you feel safe and secure in a relationship so that, you know, yours is yours, theirs is theirs, and yours is yours together. And we can make an hours kind of thing exist and how to get creative about how to do things so that you didn't end up in a really uncomfortable position, but you ended up in a really healthy and a really beautiful position. I love it. I love it. Okay. So can I get into your book? Yeah. You want to show it again? You want to show the book again? Um, Oh my God. I'm so excited for you. There's nothing better than a book, baby. This is your second book, baby. Um, it's so I self-published two books. Balloons. I don't know what's going on here. Every time you say, yeah, when you you do this thing on zoom. So, um, I self-published two books and this is my first real book. I'll call it by a publisher union square. And, um, I'm so excited because it's, I'll tell you what I love about it and then ask me anything you want, but it's nonfiction, right? Because it's all about dating and, and relationships and tips and things. It talks about my clients and stories. I like that part that you talk about your clients. But it reads like a fiction because the stories, yes. like you get the details and it's almost like you're reading like everybody's individual, like each chapter has its own story about the people and what's happening. You're like, what happened to them? What happened to It just, but it takes I love you that. through I it. I love that. So relatable. Yeah. And we change names, don't worry. So like we. Yeah. Like Taylor there Swift. is one name actually that is real in the book and they didn't add, he didn't ask me to change it. So I didn't change it. There you go. Yeah. I wrote about in the, my book, my, my last section of my book was all about my horrible dates. Yeah. I changed their names. I felt yeah, yeah, you have to. <laughs> <laughs> no, only, only good things are written here. That's not, right. Nothing not good with real names. Yeah. But you're so right. Like when I was reading, I'm like, okay, wait, it's, you talk about something and then there's an example with your clients. Right. So right. you actually. Right understand because it, it, you're right it's like a like a romance like a right a romance novel which makes really it so easy. it's like a like an like an enjoyable read it's like a book you could take on the beach and but that you walk away with wisdom yes, and you nuggets your own life it's not just fantasy mm-hmm. and fun there's right. purpose behind it but yes. it feels like fantasy and fun totally and there's little nuggets and then you do like the tips at the end of each chapter yes which i love too okay so yes, i'm gonna I ask you a couple it. questions can we get in but I, how much do you want me to give away about the book it's okay. You can give just things away little, because give, you're never, you're never going to experience it unless you read it. It's totally that's exactly right. Let's talk about, I have a couple things. I really, this is yeah. okay. the five date. Let's no, no, wait five dates to touch. Yeah. Uh-huh. I totally agree with you. I Nobody totally agree with me. I love you. But I'm too scared to tell my clients that. Okay. Okay. Now so I'm you, going to. Okay. Okay. But this is the Elisa sweet thing, right? Okay. Everybody's yes, like, but Elisa. How do I know if this is the one? How will I know? I really want to know. I want to know. I want to know that they know. How will we both know? And everybody gives an answer and it goes like this. When you know, you'll know. Okay, can't stand that answer. Oh, I hate it. I, I'm hate not it. a fan of that answer. Okay, here's my answer. If you start dating and you do not touch, you choose to take on the Elisa challenge, you do not touch for the first five dates. If somebody wants a date number six, what do I know? You both like each other. That's exactly Enough right. Enough to tolerate five dates with zero physical touch and you want to see each other a sixth time. Do you think people actually follow? Do they listen to you? Do they follow through? Because I know if I told a couple of my clients that they'd be like, okay, Jen, okay, Jen. And then they would be like, okay, or something in the so car. Some you know? people can't do it, but then they're going to keep coming back to you and like, but I don't know what happened. I mean, he really liked me. And then we were together, like oh, really don't you together love on like the second date. And it was amazing and blah, blah, blah. And then he dumped her, right? Yep. Because he was never going to keep her anyway. You're so anyway, right. It always happens. So some people can't hold back because they either they can't or they don't want to or they're not interested to try fine 
but I've had Jewish clients, non-Jewish people, anybody who's heard my advice, they said, you know, I asked my date. I said, like, I follow this, you know, matchmaker dating relationship coach, Aliza, and this is her advice. Like, you willing to try this? And guess what? They said yes. Yeah. And think about it. If they say no, do you really want to go out with them? Because why do you think they're in the relationship? What are they looking for? What are they looking for? I never thought of that. It's a test. It's a perfect test. But it's for both people. Yes. Like I said it in the show, I want people to touch hearts. That's the inside that I want to touch. Not anything else. Like it's, it's irrelevant information, the physical side of things. If there is no chemistry, if there's no values that exist between you, no banter in the conversation, let's just do the math. Okay. How much of your life is spent physically in the bedroom, in bed together, and how much of your life is spent living your life together. Do the math. Okay. I'm not good at math, but I got you. Yeah. Like, hello. Okay. I mean, you need to know if you like the human being, how yes. you feel with them. Good. You can work on that later. If you don't like the human being, I don't care how they feel. It means nothing. Now you want to date, you want to have fun. Just say, I'm going out on a date to have fun, but don't tell me that you're looking for like a real relationship. And then you don't actually try to get to know somebody because you're not going to make it. Well, people do make decisions based on physical intimacy, but it's definitely the wrong thing. The to wrong, choose. wrong. That's, absolutely. That's the icing on the cake. But if you don't like the cake, who cares? There's nothing to ice. So start <sighs> with it. And I'm, wait a minute. In, in the observant religious community, right? We don't touch until after we get married. We get married and then it's like, okay, literally physically holding a hand happens after the marriage. So I'm pretty reasonable, right? I'm not saying you should follow that because I'm not saying everybody can do that. That's not a set of rules that I think everybody can abide by, but I'm saying let's do it for five days because I look one date, doing it for one date, it's not enough, right? I agree. Three dates. Is three dates enough? Nah, somebody might hang in there just to like get something out of it. Five dates. Nobody's paying for and tolerating five dates unless they like you. I 100% and you agree. Like them. And Absolutely. It's mutual. It's mutual. Yes. It's a win win. So, everybody who follows this, you know, like it works. And if you don't follow this, good luck. Bye bye. Have fun. Yeah. And like you have to be intentional. Like you have yes. to be intentional about your dating, right? And you're right. Five dates. That makes sense to me. I say three, I say whatever, I say never the first. And people are like, oh, what do you mean? I know so and so from X, Y, or Z, and they're married 25 years and they had sex in the front. I'm like, okay, you know what? That's one no, person. Listen, you're going to always have stories like that, but you're right. going to have 98 or 99% fails compared to every 1% that actually works like that. So it's nice that that's a story and it could be your story, but it's not a recipe for success. And if you're going to date 100 people, I'm going to give you a method that's going to rule them out faster because usually listen play the game again like date one okay good enough to go on a date two date two oh okay intrigue date three maybe it's a fail you know date four okay now we're still going south it's a fail good great now we're done like if you don't want it right right if you're done you don't want to keep dating so stop and if you do you could go out again but how many memories do you want in your brain when you're with your person how many because oh, all of those things come with you. And you know what they are? They're not memories. They're called trauma. Why is it trauma? Because they don't match up to what you have. So either what you have is not good enough and never will be because you have it compared to all of your memories, which by the way, our memory increases in terms of like it volumizes the memory. So it, anything that was good was like amazing later on. And the more time that passes, the more amazing it is. And we're comparing that to our now person. Is that really healthy for your long-term relationship? So I'm not looking to only help people to get married and to build healthy relationships, but I'm looking to help keep that relationship going for a whole lifetime. Absolutely. And if you, I mean, any, listen, anybody who's hearing this advice now, I was like, I want to do that. But like, oh my gosh, I've been with X number of people. Am I broken? You, you, you've got stuff to work on. Make sure that you work on forgetting. Yes. <laughs> or keep the forgetting. skeletons in the closet. We don't need a body count. Hello. <laughs> No one needs to tell that, but is that crap? Oh my gosh. Okay. So this goes right into my next thing. Date them until you hate them. Date them, girl. I was dying. I'm like, this is when I saw it on the show, I was like, it's amazing. But then I read it and I was like, date them until you hate them. That's awesome. Right. I think right. it's amazing. I'm all for it. So talk okay. about that for a minute. How do, where'd you get that? Okay. So we, I don't really believe in hating anybody. I'm all about love. I'm Me literally too. about the opposite. But the definition of date them until you hate them is if you don't hate them, Datum. 
right? If you don't hate them, you should continue to go out with them because everybody has logic and it's flawed, okay? The world's logic about dating is, well, if it's not a wow, yes, I guess it's a no. And my logic is if it's not a no, if it's not a hate them, if it's not, you're not for me, then it's just a yes for another date. You should be anywhere between neutral, neutral minus, neutral plus through like, ooh, ah. and the more wow you are and the more excited you are, the less excited I am. Me because too, in the same way. Often yeah. those wows, it's like fireworks dead, fireworks dead. So I love neutral, neutral minus, neutral plus. I am all about neutral because we'll see if they'll become a plus or they'll become a minus in five dates and it'll be very easy. It also doesn't waste people's time. Do you know that Agreed. people come to me, they've been in relationships for one, two, three, and four years, and they're still not sure if they quote, like the person enough to continue with them. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Really? Mm -hmm. I could solve that in five dates. Yeah, in absolutely. five dates, I can figure that out. They couldn't figure it out in a couple of years. And that concerns me. How can you not know? How have you not spent enough time together? Why have you not had those quality conversations? That should come up much earlier than that. It doesn't have to come up in five dates, but you should figure that out within the first six months. I agree. And within six months, it's either he's yours or move on or she's yours or move on. Like, yeah. that's it. That's it. Oh my gosh. Right. I love it. So it's really, you know, date them to you. If you're, you're done. <laughs> Date him to your dad, but it doesn't have a ring. No, you know, exactly. date him to your dad would have never made one of the captains. We you know? a little Ryan. We have to do a little Ryan. Gotcha. Date him to your dad. It is. It's so good. It's so good. I call it um, the dating for now theory of dating for now because just like you're talking about, that's how I met my my boyfriend of eight years. Is that we were friends, and then we just he said to me, "Look, I let's just date." Love. I love friends who become friends. Me too. Yes, I love friends who become in, in a relationship, and it's, it's my good. favorite. It's good stuff. Okay, so um, we did the five ways to touch, which I love. Okay, can we do the five date rule? Is that the different? Five. Oh, the f well, the five ways not to touch. What did you just? No, say? I'm sorry. I'm like so. I'm no the five date. We did the 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 not touching for five dates. Yeah. But then there's a five date rule, which is five dates, five hours, five days. Yes. Should I give that away too, or no? That's okay. It's okay. We can oh, share. I just, like, it's all so good. It's, I just don't know what it is. Right. So the five date challenge is like encourage people to try going on five dates. Because again, right. after five dates, if you don't like them, like it's okay, we can move on. And no more than a five hour date. Um, even, the first one shouldn't even be that long. It should be like an hour and a half, two oh my hours. God, you're, my, you're inside my brain. Yes, exactly. Right. right. That's in the beginning. But like as things progress, you know, date four, date five, you're like, wow, I really like them. I want to go out. I've had people call me and be like, we were on a nine hour date. And I'm going, what? I had somebody call me recently and tell me they were on a 22 and a half hour date. And I was like, no, friend, you are doing this wrong way too much. So five dates, challenge yourself mentally to choose to go out with this person for five dates, do five no more than five days between dates. You got to keep oh, a moment. Oh, that's important. That's important. Tell us like, yeah. Every other day, every two or three days, get a momentum going. So don't let five days lapse and no more than five hours. I love that. So I have a question. So let's say that this is a big thing with my clients. They say yeah. to me, oh, I've been talking to him. We've been talking for like three months. So it's fine. Three months. And I'm like, but have you met like in real life? And they're like, oh, no, 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 but it's fine. I'm like, wait a minute. Wait just a minute. So three months has gone. You've wasted three months of your time. You haven't even met the person. Correct. Does that I happen? Like that he, yes, often. Yeah. And I, my, like, I have all my Eliza things. Like, I like that people meet within the first two weeks. If we have Same. to stretch it, three weeks, four weeks makes me uncomfortable. And me unless too. there's a pandemic, I don't want six weeks going by. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Because I've had it DOA, dead on arrival. I've had people talk on the phone. They're like, quote, in love, ready to take. Did you have this? I had it. I saw it with my own eyes in my own house because they came and they met and they met me and we talked to, they went out da, da, da. and he shows up and he's like a deer in headlights. And he's like, like, he was like spaced out even. And I was like, are you disappointed? Does she not look the way you want? Like, well, like, what's going on? Like, I'm trying to take him aside. Like, what's, what's happening? And, and he's like, no, I'm fine. And I'm going, no, that's not fine. I don't know what you think fine is, but that like, is no. not the taste of fine. It was, and she was, and I was like, Aliza. <sighs> We are not, and they had only been talking. It wasn't, that wasn't actually a super long time. It was a couple weeks. But still. But, we made, but it was like, it was like enough. There was so much disappointment. Like, 
what happened to the person that I knew on the other end of the line before we met? Where did they yeah. go? So yeah. I like to confirm in person. I don't mind that you go back to virtual as okay. long as every two to three weeks you confirm in person that you still like each other and you're, oh my gosh. Yeah, you're not embarrassed to be out with them at a restaurant. You know, you're comfortable that if at the right time you introduce them to family and friends, like down the road, like there has to be something real there. Absolutely. So I love that. So five dates, five hours, no longer than five days in between. Oh my God. No longer than five hours. Don't right. really aim for five God, hours. No. I mean, I have clients that are like, oh, I slept over. I'm like, okay, this is just, oh, no. I mean, no, no, oh, no, no. Okay. No, I, this is the quote that you have in your book that I, I love. It was my, like one of my most favorite quotes. You were talking about not finding someone attractive. Like this guy who walked in or you were like, do you not think she's pretty? Do you not think she's whatever? And, and I think that's a big thing for a lot of my, I don't know why my male daters are like, well, she, you know, she's not really my type and did it. But you said something, her looks aren't, he said, no, you said her, her looks aren't going to change. And you, he, and then you said, no, but the way you look at her will. Yes. Such okay. A so line. I loved it. Such I a love it. Such a line. So I had a client once say to me, Aliza, I don't want to keep dating. I said, okay, why? He said, because when I first met her, I didn't instantly think that she was attractive. And I know that if I keep going out with her, I will. Okay. He was that self-aware that he knew that that would happen. And he says, and I don't want to come to like her because I wasn't instantly attracted. I said, well, how do we know that your instant attraction is valid. If you're going to come to like her, then maybe what you saw in an instant was just a glimpse. And maybe that wasn't even a good view. So this also kind of goes back to dating somebody for five dates, right? When I've met you, first of all, when I see a photo, I make a judgment. In a split second, I make a judgment, right? No, not my person. How do you know? Their glasses. I know, Especially right? It's the crooked smile. The, their face was not symmetrical. Their, their, um, the piece of jewelry, the belt, the something. Literally, there's, there's something. I know. I just know. Okay. Then fine. If you get them on a date, great. They walk in. Boom. I've made another judgment immediately. And in my head, I've already said yes or no. Right now, how much time do you have under your belt? Hardly a thing. Right after one date, what do you have? Two hours, three hours of information. Okay, but after two dates three days, five days. How many hours of information do you have? How much more valid is the information you have? It's like you're looking at a piece of the puzzle and not the whole thing. And you're like, you've got one piece and you're going, I don't like it. I don't like it. You're like, but you don't know what it looks like. No, no, no. I know. Really? Because you spoke to them for 10 hours, 20 hours. You asked them, who do they want to be when they grow up? Where do they want to live? What kind of family do they want to have? What are their dreams and aspirations? Do you really like know who they are? No, no, no. Like it's the vibe, the type, the this, that. No, no, no. Give it a chance. Give See? it a chance. Absolutely. If it's not a no, it's a yes for another date. That's it. If it's a hard no, because I'm never going to want to wake up looking at your face and it's going to pain me my whole life. Okay, that's a no. But if it's like a, I wish you were different than you are, but like, it's not a hard, no, it's just not what I, not what I thought I was going to end up with. Then you probably should go out because you might have, um, I don't want to spoil anything else, but like HQH, you might have a high quality human. It's another chapter in the book. When you miss it, I'm just telling you, you, they don't come around so often Mm -hmm. and they are just magnificent people to marry and magnificent people to be in a relationship with. And it's like so sad to me that people don't give that they don't give themselves enough of a chance do you think it's their sabot they're like self-sabotaging sometimes yes yeah i Absolutely. feel like that too i feel like they're saying something that they don't like about this person that meanwhile it's just because they're not ready to date it could be that they're not ready it could be that there's um fear commitment yeah. um ptsd from previous relationships there's trauma from like families. They grew up with this. They can't even imagine getting married. Or if you come from an amazing family, I'm never going to live up to that. How am I going to live up to that? Or I like them. I could probably be okay with them, but how am I going to bring them home? Because my family is going to judge them more harshly and I don't think that they're going to accept them. So there's like, there's, there's so many layers of thinking and there's so many stories running around in people's heads. They don't even know, like they can't, you got to pick it all apart so that you're actually clear about what's stopping you from moving ahead. If it's not for you, it's not for you, but it might be. So you shouldn't necessarily, you know, throw something away. Okay. So on the show, I remember, tell me if I'm wrong. Did you not show the pictures of them, of the people? first sometimes 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 i did and sometimes i'm like want to try a blind date and how much not do you trust me because I, I don't want about trust but like are you open to a different kind of dating experience right oh my god the whole thing was so just so good 
It was a great show. The book is great. You're great. Your your vibe is great. Everything about you. I'm like such. I have such a girl crush on you. I can't even tell you. Um, I I just love that you were here. This is like my. I, I just can't even speak. I'm I'm like speechless, which never happens. That's so but I wanted to thank you so much because I think that you are just invaluable. Everything, your little nuggets of whatever. I thank you. Thank, thank you, you for being here. Okay, so tell everybody the book comes out in December. Yes, and it's on okay. pre-sale now. Pre-sale now. So we're going to put the pre-sale link in the show notes. I'm going to, we're going to hype it up because I want everyone to get this book. It was fantastic. You need it. I, two you need people it. need it. You as a single person need it for you. And if you're in a relationship and you're happy and healthy, right. but you want to help somebody else, read it. You'll know all of my tips. I'm like, it's like a download of my brain. And you're like, oh, I could do that. And I could help somebody in that way. Oh, I never thought of that. That's a great, yeah. that's great. That's it helps awesome. them to be their own, be somebody else's matchmaker. No, but they I should love, find you. The whole world should play matchmaker. It's by Don't the you way, think? The most, it's the most fun thing. I, know, I, love right? it. I love it. And when it works. Yeah. When, when then, it doesn't work, can I take, for, like, is it like, have you had people like mad at you or I, I don't know. I'm oh, not yeah. a matchmaker. Really? Yeah. yeah. You're either loved or hated in this business. You are <sighs> either their savior or Satan. You're just one of those two. <laughs> at least you know that going in. Yeah. You know yeah you're either least... win or lose. There's mostly not an in-between. <laughs> oh, girl. I just think you're amazing. Thank you so much for being here. And tell everybody where they can find you. I'm going to put it in the show notes, but. Okay. Uh, my website, you can go to my name, elizabenshalom.com. You'll see a little book link there. You can grab that. Anything else that we offer, we're here to help. We've got free information. We've got paid services, whatever you need. We are here for you. And we just, just want to help you find a love that lasts. I love it. I might come work for you. Sounds like fun over there. It sounds like fun over there. I'm telling you. I'm like, we that's have a... the best time. I have oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, it's so nice. Yeah, you, you have a great team. Um, okay, so I'm going to let you go because I can't keep you forever, but um, I just thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, everybody, go grab this book. Go watch Jewish Matchmaking and then do something fabulous for yourself today. Um, I always say when I leave, you guys know this if you follow me, and if you don't, then this is new. Peace, love, and so much truth. That's it. Thanks, Elizani. <laughs>